So here I'm going to go over a few, actually four, questions that have come up in the comments recently, all of them having to do with the reading and writing portion of the test, although I don't know how many of these are actually official questions, but that's okay. We'll just go through them one at a time here. So the first one here is as follows. The wok pan is capable of many different blank including stir-frying vegetables and braising meat. And here, the answer, I'll just go ahead and tell you that the answer is going to be D, as it says. But the question is, why is it so? Isn't the first part independent and the second dependent? So should the answer not be option A? So by the first part, which uh, is independent, I, I believe the student means this part, up to and including uses. So I'm not going to underline it, but up to and including uses. And that is definitely an independent clause. The wok pan is capable. That itself would be uh, an independent clause. But the wok pan is capable of many different uses. But the second part is not a dependent clause. D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T. That's something that I myself uh, have been a little sloppy about in the past, but I've been making sure to be more precise about in more recent videos. And that is the distinction between a dependent clause and a phrase. This would be a phrase. It doesn't really matter what kind of phrase, but I would say it's a participle phrase because it starts with a participle, including. Uh, but what's the difference between a dependent clause and a phrase? Well, a dependent clause is going to be something that starts with a a subordinator. Subordinate clause is another term for a dependent clause as far as I'm concerned. But a dependent clause would be something like, you know, until it stops raining. Or uh, because, and that should have been a capital U there, uh, because I forgot um, my pen. I don't know. So these are things that start with subordinators. Those are dependent clauses. And I have another video which I'll link to about commas before dependent clauses and when and when not to use them when the dependent clause comes later in the sentence. If a dependent clause opens a sentence, it'll need to be followed by a comma. A phrase, on the other hand, well, you can't really state a one-size-fits-all rule in terms of phrases. In this case, we do need a comma because this phrase is basically serving as a kind of modifier for the word uses. It has many different uses. They could have also said, which include stir-frying vegetables and braising meat. And I think there it would be clear that we definitely do need, do need a comma. And it's the same thing here. So comma is needed because this is a phrase. But again, I'll link to another video about uh, commas before dependent clauses that come later in the sentence and it can get a little complex. It is true that usually you don't need a comma before a dependent clause at the end of the sentence but sometimes you do. So check out that other video for more on that. This one, this was asked a month ago and I apologize I have been under the weather for much of the last month and have been very slow but we'll do it here. So can someone explain this question to me? Some detractors object to wind farms on aesthetic grounds, in term, like their appearance. They, they think they look ugly. Yes, a more legitimate concern pertains to personal health. Blank. A relationship between wind turbine noise and adverse health effects caused by annoyance and sleep deprivation in up to 20% of residents living close to wind farms. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we have a few different errors in terms of our incorrect answers here. Uh, this student is correct. The answer is going to be C. Okay, and why is that? Well, here again, I'll have to shrink this down just a little bit to fit it in. Here again, it's going to be helpful, I would say even necessary, to, to think about this in terms of independent clauses and such. So this portion here is definitely an independent clause, up to and including the word health. 
okay, because that could stand on its own as a sentence. We could put a period there if, you know, we just ignored what came later. A more legitimate concern pertains to personal health. Okay, that is an independent clause. What about this portion? Well, it's going to depend on the answer choice because some of these do different things. You know, some studies show, so here I'm just going to do a, a yellow, but what answer choice A would do is create a second independent clause. And one thing you want to be sure about is, you know, being able to recognize when you have a comma splice, when you're splicing together two independent clauses with only a comma. That's always going to be wrong when you see it on a standardized test such as the SAT or ACT. You'll see it in other writing sometimes. It's not the end of the world, but they're always going to consider it wrong on these tests. Okay, B is sort of the flip side of that error because what we get here is, well, we have a semicolon. You want to remember that the semicolon is basically the same thing as a period. It's going to be used to join two things that are independent clauses, but the problem with B is that this is not an independent clause. Again, I'm going to say it's not a dependent clause either. It's just some kind of a phrase. It's long, but it's still a, a phrase. Okay, and we can't do that any more than we could do this. Okay, C is going to be our correct answer. We have an independent clause. We have a colon. We have an independent clause. And with a colon, it doesn't have to be followed by a second independent clause, but it can be. And you can consult other videos on this channel where I talk about colons in more detail, but that's okay. And then in terms of the, uh, the content, you know, how the first part and the second part relate to each other, this works in terms of, you know, it's, it, it is a colon situation because we have what I would call the, the setup and the payoff. Okay, the setup and more legitimate concern pertains to personal health. Okay, what is that concern? Well, some studies show a relationship between this and the other. Okay, so that's going to be our correct answer for sure. And then D, I think the issue with D, well, there are two issues with D. That, the word that is unnecessary there, but it's also not really an and situation, meaning it doesn't really make sense to connect the red portion and the yellow portion with the word and, because that's just not really how those parts relate. So yeah, the answer here is definitely going to be C. Another example, which again I'll have to shrink down, gathering accurate data on water flow in the United States is challenging because of the country's millions of miles of blank the volume and speed of water at any given location can vary drastically over time okay so once again I hadn't really looked at these other than just kind of gathering them together uh, but I'm gonna say that we've got well this could have been another colon situation I don't want that line to cover up the sentence gathering accurate data okay is challenging because okay blah 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 Yeah, I mean, that could have been an independent clause. Gathering accurate data is challenging because of the country's millions of miles of waterways. But looking at the answer choices, we can see that they're going to kind of extend things and make this whole sentence into a single, long, independent clause. But here, I think, yeah, that's why I was questioning the period in the previous one, because I had looked at this one. And that I think that period is not supposed to be there. Um, I'd say I'm going to say that D is going to have to be the correct answer, and essentially what we get is is something like this: gathering data. I'm going to simplify the sentence here. Gathering data is difficult because of A and B meaning, you know, reason A and reason B, because of the country's millions of miles of waterways and the fact that the volume and speed of water in any given location can vary drastically over time. So in this case, you know, what I'm calling A is the country's millions of miles of waterways, and what I'm calling B is the fact that the volume and speed of water can vary drastically over time. And so why not A? Well, 
except in very rare cases, you're not going to want a comma either right before or right after the word that. The only time you would want a comma after the word that would be if there were some sort of interruption right after the word that. So, yeah, like here, I'll try to make up an example. It is possible that in some cases, You could have an interruption here. You could have an interruption here. Okay, but you're not going to have a single comma after that. And you're not going to have a single comma right before that. And I think you can pretty much take that to the bank. I mean, again, I, can we say that with 100% certainty? No, but it would take something like an interruption either beginning after the word that or ending right before the word that for you to have a comma in either one of those places. And so that will do it for this video. Thank you for your questions. Any more questions, feel free to ask, and I'll do my best to get to them in the future.